Hey guys, you're listening to our Star Trek Prodigy Review Podcast. I'm Toby, and I'm joined on this animated journey by Steve. Hi Toby. And if you love Star Trek, like and subscribe, and why not share your opinions on this week's episode in the comments below. So this week's episode is Dreamcatcher. The crew have their first away mission on an undiscovered planet that manifests their deepest desires only to realise the planet has desires of its own. So we open with Dahl's first attempt at Captain's Log, in which we learn that the holographic Janeway has been teaching the crew about the basics of running a starship, and basically discussing how amazing Autopilot is. And I think it's nice that he's trying to do these logs. This is an important scene because... You know, last week you said you thought Janeway knew a little bit more than she let on. Well, the Class M planet comes up with Thor on emissions. So it's in the Herosian system, which I thought was interesting. But this is where Dahl says no, and where Janeway makes him change his mind. So she's manipulated him into doing what she wanted in the first place anyway. She wants to go here. Why does she want to go here? This is it. She's the one that makes Dahl change his mind and set the course for their first away mission. Mm. Which I love the way that they're all looking forward to it as well. They're all so excited, aren't they? Like little kids. It's great. Yeah. I do like the little scene where she's handing out the phasers and the tricorders. And Zero detects unknown gas sample. And straight away, Jan comes like, yeah, okay, cool, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know that's really childish. Right, okay, that is for the children, but I did chuckle. Yeah, so did I. I can see Harry and Tom doing that when they were younger. (laughs) You can just see either of them doing that, can't you? Yeah. When we get on the planet, we do get to see that Starfleet, is it an all-terrain vehicle? Is that what you call that? It's like a buggy type thing, isn't it? Like Picard used in one of the films, I can't even remember which one it was now. Yes, he did, didn't he? Yeah. Surprise, surprise, it's not long before Dahl steals it and drives off on his own. He's like, you lot, do the scans, see you later. (laughs) Opening the episode with the captain's log, and then within two minutes, he's now stolen this vehicle and is going off on his own doing a childish thing. Yes. So you've gone from one end to the other so quickly. Yeah, very quickly. Very quickly. I like the way the planet looked as well. I thought it looked very good. The, The animation, whatever you want to call it, is gorgeous. It really is gorgeous. Yeah. It's really, really good. And I've seen a few episodes of Lower Decks. I would like to say I prefer the animation in Prodigy. Yep, I do too. Meanwhile, back on the ship, Gwen, she doesn't take too long. She decides to use her telepathic abilities to activate that. It's it's like a programmable matter weapon. Yeah, like some kind of heirloom that belongs to her. I was quite impressed that she could telepathically link to it. That was quite good. Mm. It's either a genetic thing or maybe it's her lineage, her family line or something like that, isn't it? What, what did you make of her exchange with Murph? She says to him, you might or you might not be smarter than he looks. I don't know. He managed to get on that console. Was it first or second episode, wasn't he? To hit the fire button. Yeah. <laughs> he knew what to do there. <laughs> I don't know with Murph. I think we've not really seen enough of him to judge him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't really think there's a lot there either. Going back to Gwen, she doesn't take too long to take control of the ship and send a message to her father. And she's like, reprogrammed Janeway as well. I'm like, she's meant to be here. She's meant to be on this ship. You know, she's, this is what her task is, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, definitely. She's more knowledgeable than we're led to believe, I think. Mm, definitely. Yeah. But I wasn't too happy with her being able to reprogram a hologram like that. Yeah, it was quite quick, wasn't it? It's just mad. Absolutely mad. This is a Starfleet vessel. It was meant to have Starfleet protocols on it. She's just like, yeah, bang, boom. Like, it was nothing. Yeah, I agree. That's probably the only sort of down from this Mm. episode, if you want, if there is going to be a down. Back on the planet, we have the crew basically kind of get what they want. They start to see exactly what their desires and their wishes are. You've got Rock that has these, they're like Furbies, really. (laughs) (laughs) I found that like a little bit sad, like she's just lonely. She just wants friends. She perceives herself as this big thing, doesn't she? She's not this tiny little cute thing. Yeah. She wants people to see her like that. That's it. And I was just like, oh. And then you've got Zero that sees the engine that we saw on the Protostar last week. Yes. This is like a big version of it. So he's obviously intrigued by that. Yeah. And then you get Pog, whose desire is food. That would be me. Donuts. <laughs> It's good job I'm not trapped on the planet. <laughs> you can get me off it. <laughs> and then you get Darl again, another sad moment. That he just sees the back of his parents. Yes, but that's clearly his deepest desire. This is a kid's show. Yes. 
it was good as an adult. I like it. But maybe too dark for a kid's show. Yeah, absolutely. There's some times in the show where you know that it's more for the adults than it is the children. And then sometimes it's more for the children than it is for the adults. It's such a well-written show. It really is. I mean, you go from getting these desires and then literally the next scene is Janeway appearing to Dahl. He's not dumb. He's not thick. It takes him seconds to realise that this Janeway that's appearing to him on the planet is not the holographic Janeway he knows on the ship. Yeah, did you notice how she looked like living witness Janeway? There was a little hint there. There really was, wasn't there? If you're a child, right, you know, you're watching this, you're quite young. You know Janeway. You've got, you're getting to know this character. And then Janeway appears. And then all of a sudden she goes absolutely mental and vines start coming out of her and she starts hunting you down. <laughs> Is that not a bit confusing? I don't know. I mean, I don't know how young they go. I mean, what age do you usually watch Nickelodeon? My sister used to watch Nickelodeon, but she was seven. Was, was seven-year-old really watch Star Trek Prodigy? I, I don't know. I think probably it's aimed at the slightly older child. I would probably say nine or ten-year-old. Yeah, that's where I'd put it at. Yeah, yeah. But I did like that scene, though. I did love it, as much as I'm just saying about it. It yeah. was absolutely well done and quite terrifying, really. <laughs> I, I think for as short a scene as it was, like you said, really well done and scary. Then you have a shot of the Diviner, and he's telling Gwyn that he's proud of her. You know, even at this stage of the series, you know that's not quite right. And surprise, surprise, it's the planet trying to convince her to stay. Yeah. And I find that really interesting that all she wants is her father's approval at the end of the day. Yeah. Which is sad. It, yeah, it is. And then we get the cliffhanger, which is that... Gwen is trying to escape on the protostar, but the plants are holding it down and it becomes too strong and the vessels yeah. get destroyed. So she escapes on an escape pod. Loved it. What I like about that moment is that the ship doesn't actually get that badly damaged, but Janeway tells her it's going to be. And it's another moment that you realise that Janeway is now manipulating the situation again. The third time in as many episodes, I mean, there's only been what we're only on for. And it all leads to like a great scene where she uses the half made uh, shuttle from the very first episode. Which is brilliantly done. And the ship gets kind of thrown away from the vines and appears to crash land off in the distance. With the crew now stuck, don't quite know how far away from it. We don't know how damaged the ship is. We don't know how they're going to get off the planet at this point, do we? That's right. It kind of leaves them all stranded with the crash shuttle. It's a, it's a good ending. It, it really is. Another great cliffhanger. Last week you said, you know, um, they certainly know how to end them. And this was a good ending. Before we go, don't forget to check out our Orville and Strange New Worlds review podcast on our channel. Links can be found in the description alongside details of how you can help support our channel. Next week's episode is Terra Firma. If you could sum it up in a sentence, how would you sum it up? It's the conclusion to bringing Gwyn into the rest of the crew. That's it. Simple, sweet, and done. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, would you say it's one to watch? It's definitely important then, given that. Oh, absolutely. I think even the, the one filler episode that I considered filler was beyond exceptional. And this series just doesn't let you down at all. Every single episode keeps you going and it, it ends and you're like, you need to watch the next one. We gave an 8 out of 10 for the last episode. I would want to give this more like an 8.5, maybe even a 9, purely because there's a lot of original series vibe here. Yeah. So I want to give it more for that. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with you. It's, it's, it's somewhere between 8 and 9, but 8.5 would be good. So that's it for another episode of our Star Trek Prodigy review. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe and ensure you have your notifications turned on so you can be notified when we drop the next episode, Terra Farmer.